Open Fractures of the Tibia Introduction 25% of tibial shaft fractures can be open. Open fractures can lead to complications including wound problems, osteomyelitis non-unions, and infected non-unions. The treatment of open fractures of the tibia can be challenging, and a lot of the concepts are not black and white. They may be in the gray zone. We don't know about the best time for the treatment. We don't know what is the optimal irrigation solution and what is the optimal pressure for the fluid. We don't know about the ideal duration of antibiotic prophylaxis, but we know it is important to give the appropriate antibiotics early and we need to do meticulous debridement. And that the iron rod is better than the plate or the external fixture, and the result of reamed and unreamed nail are the same. We need to close or cover the wound before one week, and the vac can be used provisionally when we can close the wound, primarily at the optimal time. Classification of open fractures. Grade 1 less than 1 cm. Grade 2 from 1 to 10 cm. Grade 3 more than 10 cm and there is contamination. Grade 3 is divided into 3 A, B, and C. A there is adequate tissue for closure. B there is extensive periosteal stripping and the patient will need a flap, rotational flap or a free flap. C is vascular injury that requires repair or amputation. The relative indication for amputation is warm ischemia more than 6 hours and absent plantar sensation and severe epilateral foot trauma. The most predictive factor for amputation is the severity of the soft tissue injury in the epilateral extremity. When comparing limb salvage versus amputation, the patient outcome is generally the same at 1 to 5 years. Lack of plantar sensation does not predict poor outcome after limb salvage. Segmental fractures are grade 3, even if the open fracture is 1 cm. Irrigation and debridement. The ideal irrigation solution and the pressure used is controversial. Timing of the initial debridement is controversial. Irrigation and debridement within six hours was the gold standard in the past. Debridement is performed as a priority procedure no later than the morning after admission. There is no difference in infection rate for a patient who has initial surgery before or after 6 hours, including patients with type 3 open fractures. More than 40% of the patients wait longer than 6 hours for their initial surgery after arrival at the hospital. Delayed surgery for less severe fractures is acceptable as long as the debridement is done as a priority the following day. Unless there is a gross contamination, evidence is not clear what is the best time for the debridement. Is it the first 6 hours or the first 12 hours or wouldn't make any difference after 12 hours? It seems like giving the patient antibiotics promptly is more important than the time of debridement. The preferred solution for irrigation and debridement is normal saline and low pressure irrigation. Low pressure lavage may reduce reoperation rates due to infection, non unions, and wound healing problems. Normally, the tradition is to use 3, 6, and 9 liters of solution for type 1, type 2, and type 3 open fractures. These are just recommendations.
There is an increased risk of wound healing with antibiotic solution. Meticulous irrigation and debridement of open fractures is important in decreasing the infection risk. Antibiotics. Prophylaxis should start as soon as possible. All patients with open fractures should receive first-generation cephalosporin that will cover gram-positive bacteria. You can give penicillin for farm injuries and clostridia-prone wounds. You will give clindamycin if there is penicillin allergy. In type 3, open fractures add aminoglucoside, like gentamicin. They found that local antibiotics delivery at the site of injury decreased infection risk, like cement beaded loaded with antibiotics. Antibiotics should be given within 3 hours of the time of injury, preferably given as soon as possible. There is a reduction of 59% of acute infection in patients with open fractures treated with antibiotics. The infection rate is 1.6 times greater if antibiotics are given after 3 hours. Type 1 and type 2 open fractures require antibiotics coverage for 24 hours after wound closure. For type 3 open fractures, antibiotic administration should be given for 72 hours after the injury and no more than 24 hours after wound closure. After initial debridement, the patient will need a staged debridement within 24 to 48 hours. There is a reduction of infection rate acute and chronic for type 3 open fractures with the use of systemic antibiotics and aminoglucoside cement beads compared with antibiotics alone. The combination of antibiotics lowered the infection rate for any open fracture that is treated with an IM rod. Its effect is more noticed in type 3 injuries. Fixation and destabilization of the open fracture. Plating of open fractures may cause chronic infection and infected nonunion. The healing time is doubled with plated open fractures. The IM rod resulted in a better alignment and lower reoperation rate than the external fixer. Also, there is no difference in the infection rate between IM rod and external fixer. You can use a reamed nail or unreamed nail. They both have a comparable result and no difference in the outcome. When reaming, you can use a bigger rod and that provides a better stability. Ream nailing is superior in closed tibial fractures, but not superior in open tibial fractures. Reaming can cause increased pressure and disruption of the industrial blood supply. It can cause thermal necrosis and fat embolism with increased intramedullary risk of infection. The unreamed rod uses smaller nails and result in less stability, but preserve the industrial blood supply. Unreamed IM tibial rod appears to have a shorter time to union and fewer incidence of knee contractures when compared with circular wire external fixture. Nowadays, more and more orthopedic surgeons are using reamed nails for open fractures of the tibia. If you have a spiral fracture of the distal third of the tibia, you need to get CT scan of the ankle to identify a posterior malleolar fracture, which should be fixed before insertion of the IM rod. There is a lack of evidence to support the value of external fixture over the IM rod in open fractures of the tibia. Due to patient discomfort, the high incidence of pin tract infection and loss of alignment, external fixture should not be used as a definitive fixation.
using signal fixture temporarily less than four weeks and replace it with rod in about 14 days. External fixture may be utilized for severely contaminated open fractures. Tibial fracture treated with shorter duration of external fixture has reduction of infection risk by 80%. When there is a shorter interval between removal of the external fixture and the insertion of the iron rod of the tibia, there is a reduction of the risk of infection by 85%. Wound closure or coverage. In less severe soft tissue injury, you do primary closure without tension. In cases of delayed closure, soft tissue coverage should be done within seven days. Soft tissue coverage beyond seven days will increase the infection. There is no difference in the incidence of infection in patients who had primary closure and delayed closure of the wound. It is recommended that we do primary closure for type 1, type 2, and type 3A with tension-free closure and after timely antibiotic prophylaxis and adequate debridement. Intraoperative culture after debridement has no value. It doesn't predict future infection. Fracture in the proximal two-thirds of the tibia is treated by a rotational flap. Fracture of the distal third of the tibia requires a free flap. In the upper third of the tibia, you can treat it by medial gastrocnemius flap. In the middle third, you can treat it by soleus rotational flap. The use of a free flap for soft tissue coverage was less likely to have wound complication than the use of rotational flap. The zone of injury may be larger than expected and it may include the rotated muscle flap. The negative pressure wound therapy is used frequently. It provides provisional coverage for wounds where the physician cannot do primary closure there is decreased infection rate when using the VAC. The VAC is used for coverage after the initial debridement of the open fracture until the definitive coverage is done. It is a good temporizing dressing. It can also be used in fasciotomy wounds. The VAC promotes local wound healing. Bone morphogenic protein, BMP2, decreases the need for secondary surgery and is used in acute open tibial fractures treated with iron rod. 